Hey Skyfarers and welcome to an AFACAST Hobby Showcase video. Hobby Showcase is the series where I shine a spotlight on cool examples of Caldron Overlord's hobby work from the community to give the artists and creators that have made this stuff a little bit of extra recognition. And because I want to share this stuff with other people, um, because I know that things don't always permeate from one social media platform to another, so by sharing these things I'm hoping that more people will get to see this cool work. And also because I think by seeing cool work, you can get inspiration and ideas for your own armies. Uh, but to be honest, mostly it's because I like seeing cool stuff. I assume you're a bit like me and you probably like seeing cool stuff too. If you're watching Aethercast, you probably like seeing Cowards on Overlord's cool stuff. Um, so I figured, why not show you cool stuff? Okay, cool stuff. So. This particular hobby showcase video is uh, about some Dreadnought class sky vessels by a guy called Alec Burnside. If you want to see more stuff from Alec, you can go check him out on Instagram. Unsurprisingly, his name on there is Alec Burnside, all one word, and there is a link down there in the description. But let's check out his stuff in more detail. So you can see here on my thumbnail a little bit of a hint of what is to come, one of the Dreadnought class sky vessels that Alec has made. He's basically made um, big battleship style Cauldron Overlord sky vessels by piecing together multiple Cauldron Overlord's kits and then other kits as well um, to make these big ginormous ships that dwarf the other sky vessels, pun intended. But before we do, before we go into detail, let's just talk about the inspiration behind these. So in the two different Caldron Overlord's battle tanks we've had so far. There have been some mentions and some art about Dreadnought class sky vessels. And the reason we haven't had a, a kit for these lore-wise is because they're basically too expensive to build and maintain for the Caldron Overlords. These are massive uh, vessels purely designed for war and actually, for a lot of the time, the Caldron Overlords aren't at war. They are, of course, they have skirmishes and things with other races, but they are mostly trying to trade and get seams of A for gold and basically protect what they have, but they're not necessarily going to all-out war. They're only about basically protection and profit. So, in the, you know, in the, these more peaceful times, they don't necessarily need these full, massive battleships. So they basically keep them for prestige, the ones that they do have. Um, and you can see here in this example of our work from the second battle tome, um, this is a Barrack Zilfin one. And you can see it's got such a big ship here that it has um, you know, extra wings to help keep it aloft. It's got like, that bridge there, um, you know, for the, the crew to get up on the captain and stuff. And it's got lots of extra turrets and things and weapons. So. Alec is taking inspiration from the battle tome and these uh, bits of lore and artwork to build his own. Because I've seen people asking about, oh, wouldn't it be cool if we got some of these uh, Dreadnought class sky vessels as a kit from Games Workshop? And to be honest, I don't think it's ever going to happen because they're just going to be too big and too unwieldy for a game of Age of Sigma. So that, that probably won't ever happen. Alex either thought agreed that he probably you know that they won't happen or he's decided he doesn't want to wait so he's made his own which is cool um but he hasn't just made one no alec has made two so you can see here a picture of his whole army showing both of the ships he's made and what i like about this picture is it shows the sheer scale of these vessels because you can compare them to the gun haulers in the bottom right there and the three on the bottom left um and there isn't an ironclad in the picture but to be fair, an ironclad is not a huge amount bigger than a frigate, so these uh, sky vessels would completely dwarf an ironclad as well. I want to show you, um, I'm going to show you both of these in more detail, but I'll, the one I'm going to show you first is this one, the back left, because that is the one that Alec made first. Okay, so this is the first uh, battleship that Alec's made. This is giving me some information about these. This is 15 inches long. And to make this, well, first of all, it cost him over 500 pounds to make, and it took him about three months to make, which I didn't think was that, that, that bad, actually, three months. You know, it took me a long time to paint my ironclad, um, just painting it. So he said he probably could have actually done it quicker, um, 
but you can only really spend evenings on it and that sort of thing. Um, so this is built from a World War One Japanese battleship kit that he bought, and then it uses bits from two frigates and two ironclads that he bought especially for making this as well. But there's also a number of other 40k bits and other Caledon Overlords bits added this as well. At the front here, there's um, the Dwarden face from the gun hauler, another bit from the gun hauler here, the anchor. Um, so he's, yeah, he's basically used a number of Caledon Overlords bits to augment the uh, World War One battleship because obviously it wouldn't feel very Caledon Overlords without those bits. So he's added things, you know, like he's got, got the four uh, carbines there, the extra sort of uh, intake vents, and then things like the uh, the propeller and the um, the hatch there from an ironclad, and of course, obviously. At the front, he's added the uh, or the top rather, he's added um, the balloons from an ironclad, and then the back balloon is from a frigate. And there's uh, a really nice feature that he's added, which instead of having navigators in the crow's nest on these entrants here and here, he's actually added uh, Arconauts with volley guns to add a bit more extra firepower to the sky vessels as well. Which, uh, I think it's nice. Um, Let's move on to the next picture because it shows a bit more detail. Um, you can see here that at the front and the back both have uh, two turrets, both which you know one from an ironclad, one from a frigate. Um, so that's why he's had to use you know two frigate kits and two ironclad kits um, to make these extra turrets. Um, but there's also so much cool uh, and nice bits that he's added as well some little features like he's added a, a vent there from a frigate um dotted around there's some things like there's um one of the um tank, uh, ale tankards and then he's also added like two supre supremacy mines he's got the the crew there um as well with the um the telescope and things so he's added a lot of little extra details he's you know got to the effort of painting all the individual bits as well, you know, like the little leather straps there. Um, if we come on to the next bit, you can see he's painted, you know, all the extra gauges and dials and uh, handles and that sort of thing. And it's done a really nice job on the portholes as well. I think they, they look particularly nice, done a really good job. Them. And then this picture, you can also see like another extra tankard and a couple of little uh, oil cans dotted around. Some nice little touches as well. So, not he hasn't just um, you know combined all these different kits to make um, basically a big ship. He's also you know thought about and added some extra details and that sort of thing just to make it feel like a working ship, which I think is really nice. Um, if we move on, we can see the second ship that Alec made because Alec um, obviously I think. Most people probably would have been happy after making that first ship, but no, Alec wasn't. Alec wanted to outdo himself, and so he made another ship afterwards. Bigger is always better. So this ship is 22 inches long. It's made using uh, bits from four ironclads and four frigates and two uh, non-GW hits, as well as some other bits as well. You can see he's used um, the Magnet Battle Forge as well. And, you know, like some more 40k wings and things. And then, of course, both of these uh, sky vessels, he's made use of a lot of plastic as well. This one took Alec eight months to make. Um, although he says that both of these now he could probably make in about two weeks, he seems to think, which I think is crazy. <laughs> um, but uh, Alec was originally trained as a product designer, so he's got a little bit of an advantage there. There's some cool things about the ship that I want to point out. Uh, so... The, the first ship he made, he just used, you know, the normal turrets from frigates and ironclads. But that wasn't enough on this ship. He wanted to make bigger, beefier uh, turrets. So what he's done is actually use uh, balloons, uh, engines from the um, sky vessels, cut sections out of them and added two cannons for each turret um, with scopes above for targeting. So he's made his own custom turret, which is really cool. And uh, another thing I really like about this ship is he's got these free cannons out to the side of the ship. So, you know, when you see 
um, pirate films, um, and you know the, the two pirate ships side up along seaside each other, and then just all their cannons just blast the broad, you know, the broadside cannons. So he's added those as well, which I think is really nice to actually imagine if there was a huge, you know, like a civil war, cauldron over or so big battleships like just siding up to each other and shooting each other in this out of the skies. Um but then he's also added extra firepower as well with um the volley gun turrets on the side here, you know, for shooting down smaller craft and that sort of thing, which is nice. And of course this is such a massive sky vessel that it has engines on the side of the ship as well as above. Um one last thing I want to point out before moving on to the next picture is that this Magmit Battleforge piece here is not the standard, like how it standard be look. He's added extra plastic art to, that, um, to add like armor to it, to, so it feels more cowardly overlords and added rivets to it and that sort of thing, which I think is a really nice touch. Um, and as I mentioned, you can go and check him out on Instagram. If you do go check him out on Instagram, you can actually see a lot of his work in progress pics as well. I've only got the finished uh, pictures here, but if you go you know, check out the work in progress pics, you know, if you're interested in making one of these yourself, you get a lot of ideas and a lot more of an idea of how he's put these together, which is nice. Uh, if we move on to the picture on the other side, um, you can just see some of the more, uh, some of the other details, some of the like, this extra crew member, um, you know, another little cheeky tankard uh, hiding out there. Um, you can see some of the ideas he's done. I like the uh, sort of serrated blade bottom there you can imagine if this rammed another sky vessel and it would just like the serrated blade would cut in to into the into the vessel's armor which would be really cool um if we move on to this next picture you can see some more of the back and the different angle so obviously he's used the um the supremacy mines on this back section so you can and this is more like of a deck for the crew where the crew can operate but as the front the front is all all the guns blazing well, of course, there is some extra um, guns on the back here. One particular thing that I really like at the, about the back um, is he's basically created like a, a custom um, gun platform there. So it's the teleport from the ironclad, but he's added a volley gun to it. So it's like a freestanding machine gun that um, Eduardo can sort of use to shoot down smaller foe, which is nice. And then there's also like small little touches here. Like a little um, fire extinguisher, which is nice. We move on to uh, the next picture because this is my favourite picture from all of these. Because first of all, the 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 underneath shots are really cool, and it makes me imagine what this would feel like if you were on the ground and this was sort of flying overhead, and it was just how imposing this ship would look like. And it also does show some cool features that you couldn't see from the other pictures. Because uh, a sky vessel this size obviously needs to have guns on the underside as well as on top, which I think is a really nice little extra touch there. Um, if we move on, we can see here from these two pictures, the front and the back. So you can imagine, uh, first of all, this picture of the front, if this was coming towards you, all six of those cannons pointing at you, the two volley cannons on the either side, and also the carbines as well, how imposing that would look which is really cool. And then the, you can see also from the back, there's actually quite a bit of firepower there as well, because there's, uh, you know, both side cannons on either side can turn around to point towards the back if they need to. There's also a couple of little extra carbines added to the back, which is a nice touch. Um, yeah, and then also you can see down there the extra like, three sets of propellers that he's added, um, because big ship like this would need a lot of propellers to, to get it moving. So I think that's a nice touch. And there's sort of just little tidbits here and there, which is called like ammo crates here and stuff, but then also like a little holster of um, pistols. Uh, so he's used all the extra little accessories and things um, to his advantage, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, they, that's his uh, second dreadnought. He's in two really cool massive dreadnought class sky vessels battleships but there's one more thing i want to show you that alec has made and you might have spotted it earlier because it was in the um the group army picture but 
this is all well and good because he put a huge amount of work and effort into making these and he should be commended for this. But I, I can imagine a lot of you here might be watching this and thinking, well, this is great, but I couldn't do this. It's too much money, too much time. I, I just can't make these massive sky fizzles. But you can do other conversions. And Alec has done another smaller conversion as well. So he's made, you know, because he's used bits and pieces and that, he probably, probably couldn't actually make a standard frigate with all the bits he sort of can apply. So one of his frigates he's converted and he's used um, and he's made what I think is quite a cool and unique ship. So I think this is something that is more achievable for the average hobbyist of thinking, oh, okay, well, I can't do these massive dreadnought class sky vessels, but I can do a smaller conversion. So I thought I'd end on this. I think it's a nice thing to show you. So he's basically, instead of using the normal turret, he's used um, at the front here. Um, I think this is from a Earthshaker 40k artillery piece. You know, so he's added this massive cannon to the front and then instead of using the normal frigate engines and balloons he's used the ironclad um engines and he's actually put them the opposite way around which i think is a nice touch because by having the bigger engine at the front and the smaller one on the back it changes the shape and the profile of the frigate so it's less of a sleek and fast craft and it feels more like a lumbering, slow, basically like a gun hauler, but bigger. Um, you know, basically a, a flying artillery piece with this massive gun. So I think that's a nice touch. Um, if we just move on, I've got, uh, you know, two more zoomed out pictures so you can see it from either side, how those engines have sort of been used. Um, so yeah, it, the um, front engine here is, you know, the bigger one from the Ironclad which is pointing in the, you know, what would be the correct direction. And then the the back one is also the smaller one, or the medium one rather from the Iron Club, but facing in the opposite direction. And then he's added in some wings there from one of the sky vessels as well. So I think, yeah, this is just a really nice conversion that shows that, you know, you don't necessarily have to build, um, oh, there's one other thing actually, sorry. Um, he's also added an extra cool little parapet there as well with uh, the telescope from the ironclad kit because you've got a big gun there with a huge amount of range i'd imagine so you need to make sure you can target your enemy properly as well which is a nice extra touch but yeah this shows i think a more achievable conversion that people can aim towards and and do which i think is a nice way to end this show so i hope you like seeing alex stuff remember if you did like seeing his stuff, go check him out on Instagram. The link is in the description. So you can leave a like on a bunch of his pictures and follow him as well. And of course, if you did like this video, please do hit like. If you want to see more cool Caradron Overlord stuff and get more Caradron Overlord content from Apecast, obviously do hit subscribe. Um, and that's it. Thank you for watching, Skyfarers. I will see you again next time. But goodbye for now.